Number 10, The Weeknd and Bella Hadid. In 2016, Bella was on the cover of Glamour magazine where she announced that she was dating Abel Tesfay, the artist behind the moniker The Weeknd. And I'm very sorry if I butchered that name. At the time, The Weeknd had just released his popular album Starboy, and while it received critical acclaim upon release, following the announcement of Bella and The Weeknd becoming a couple was the headline of the media news world. Questions began being thrown left and right. Who? What? When? Where? Why are these guys together? Since then, the couple has been going strong and seems to be using their celebrity status to improve each other's careers. Bella has maintained her modeling gig and now acts as a social media influencer, while The Weeknd has only grown in popularity, even being cast as star in a new series on HBO Max called The Idol, chronicling a fictional pop star's attempt to remain relevant and her meeting of a man named Tedros, a nightclub impresario with a sordid past. His role has been well received so far, but the graphic content of the show and The Weeknd's role in it has made fans question the musician's creative aspirations, surely putting the magic of his celebrity coupling to the test. Number 9. Justin and Hailey Bieber Before becoming husband and wife, Justin and Hailey were slowly building up their careers as a musician and a model respectively. They met while Justin was still dating fellow pop musician and former Disney star Selena Gomez and struck up a secret romance. Now, while Justin Justin and Selena were constantly on and off again, Haley and Justin became closer and closer with each subsequent split, being friends at first but eventually becoming an official item in 2018. While they were both fairly famous before becoming official, following their marriage, it's arguable that they have rise to a new level of success and recognition. Justin is becoming one of the most replayed artists around the world, and Haley has been working hard in the fashion industry, both on the stage and behind the sewing machine. While their relationship may be true love, the fame and recognition that has come with their new celebrity status will certainly be driving this relationship for the foreseeable future. Number 8. Emily Blunt and John Krasinski This is a couple that has been in the media headlines over and over again in recent years. The former Office actor shifted his focus to the producer and director side of the industry in 2018 with the release of his horror thriller A Quiet Place, considered to be one of the best horror movies from the 2010s. Emily and John were highly successful before they met each other. While John was playing the iconic role of Jim Halpert on The Office, he actually became a fan of Emily from her role in the film The Devil Wears Prada, admitting that he had seen it roughly 70 times on repeat. They were introduced to each other in 2008, around the same time The Office had begun its fifth season, and Emily was set to star in a biopic called The Young Victoria, about Queen Victoria during her youth. The announcement of their engagement came just weeks before the premiere, creating a little bit of extra buzz that they certainly needed, as the film was not well received. Since 2010, the couple have been seen supporting each other at premieres and collaborating together whenever the opportunity arises, which seems like a cute couple thing to do, but is actually just a solid strategy for getting butts into seats. Oh honey, look, they made a movie together. That's going to be so cute. We have to go see it, said everybody. Number 7. Tom Holland and Zendaya Tom and Zendaya met in 2016 on the set of the first MCU Spider-Man movie starring Tom Holland's Spider-Man Home. Homecoming. Zendaya was not unfamiliar to fans, as she had starred in a number of successful TV shows and films before, before stepping into the role of Spider-Man's love interest, Mary Jane Watson. Although her character wasn't necessarily all that present in the first movie, their time on set was spent laughing together and bonding over their mutual interests. It was announced that the on-screen couple were official just before the release of Homecoming's sequel, Spider-Man Far From Home, which fans weren't really excited about, as it was the final film in the third phase of the MCU, despite despite Avengers Endgame just wrapping up the phase with a tight, tear-drenched bow. Following the announcement, however, ticket sales increased, and Far From Home went on to be one of the highest grossing films that Marvel has ever produced. Since then, they've appeared one more time together on screen, and have used their Marvel fame to secure roles with other major studios in several major projects. For instance, Tom is now under contract with Apple TV to star in multiple films that have so far received incredible praise, and Zendaya has made a name for herself in the role of leading lady as well, with her performance as Rue on the HBO series Euphoria, nabbing her a win for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series at the Emmy Awards, and the co-leading part of Chani in the recently revived Dune series.
series. This couple seems to be taking their combined fame and using it to fuel a career rocket that's heading straight for the moon. Number 6. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck Ben and Jen were a couple way back in the early 2000s, like a like hundred years ago. They met on the set of a romantic comedy flick called Giggly, released in 2003. While the movie may have flopped, a brief but lasting relationship was made. They went their separate ways in 2003 and maintained a solid friendship over the years, but when they went public back in the day, the media circuit ate them up creating a small boost in popularity for the couple. In 2021, Lopez ended her engagement to Alex Rodriguez and, oh, coincidentally, Affleck broke up with his partner, Ana de Armas, and the pair reunited. Of course, things only went up from there. Their names were back in the media mainstream. A re-release of the Justice League starring Affleck as Batman was unleashed onto the world, and Jen was tapped to perform at that year's American Music Awards. There is no denying that apart, these two are still famous, but together, they're a powerhouse couple with limitless power. Halfway at number 5, Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson. Looking back, this relationship was really unfortunate, and they both looked pretty uncomfortable the whole time, especially Kristen Stewart. In the beginning, I honestly just thought she was an awkward person, but seeing how she's changed over the recent years, it's clear that she was just putting on a show to promote Twilight. Their relationship, of course, coincided with the creation of the hit Twilight franchise and ended right about the same time. They were together for a very short time after the franchise ended until Kristen cheated on Robert with a film director. But Robert didn't seem too sad about it and actually got engaged only a short while after that. So to me, this situation seemed like two people who were dying for Twilight to end so they could date who they really wanted to. And at number four, Camila Cabello and Shawn Mendes. This is another relationship that I'm convinced started out as a PR stunt, but ended up turning into a real relationship. The pair met in 2014 when they were both on tour with Austin Mahone and they were apparently friendly. They even released a song together. But everything changed when they released the hit song, Senorita, that went on to be a smash hit. A big part of the success was the fact that the two of them started dating in the midst of it, and literally could not keep their hands off each other. And at first, with the level of PDA that they were showing, it looked very fake. But since it's been a few years and they're still together, I believe the fake relationship ended up blossoming into a real one. And at number three, Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens. Since these two were so young when they started making the High School Musical movies, I don't think that this relationship was exactly arranged, but I'm pretty confident confident that it was strongly encouraged. These two started dating during filming, and they broke up practically right when High School Musical was no longer on TV. And since I was a preteen at this time and totally eating up their entire relationship, I can definitely say that them dating in real life made the movies just so much better for me personally. There was also a rumor that at one point Zac Efron and Ashley Tisdale were dating, but they weren't allowed to go public with it because there needed to be the illusion that Troy and Gabriella were the ones that were actually together IRL. And at number two, Noah Cyrus and Lil Xan. I think these two were in a big relationship because they both needed publicity pretty badly and frankly it worked. We also got the legendary photo of Zan kissing Noah on the cheek on the red carpet and getting his face like smushed in. Really cringy photo. After speculation that the short relationship was staged, Lil Zan actually confirmed it. He said quote, showed us to Columbia Records too for setting up that fake relationship. I didn't want to do it to be completely honest. It was just added work to my schedule, you know what I mean? Noah immediately clapped back saying the relationship was not staged and it started when he hit her up over DMs. But her trying to deny that the relationship is faked was honestly just a little suspicious for me. And finally at number one, Taylor Swift and Harry Styles. If you've ever wondered if this relationship was faked, apparently a biography about Harry's life is coming out by Louisa Jepson and in it she claims that the relationship was in fact fake. Apparently One Direction's team quote went to great lengths to put the two together because she's such a huge star. Adding quote, anytime Taylor starts dating a new guy, she gets a flurry of media attention and her breakups receive even more, Jepsen said in the book. And one reason I believe this could be true is because this relationship was one of her most public and she made a few dates to Harry that were picked up by the press and fueled their alleged feud. And a lot of people assume that she wouldn't be that savage unless she knew that he was in on it. Number 10, Tom Hiddleston and Taylor Swift. If you've ever dated Taylor Swift, then there's a very good chance she's written a song about you. Swift has been basing her lyrical masterpieces around past relationships for a majority of her career. Splitting up with someone is never easy, but whenever this happens to Taylor, it gives her a chance to pump out another top charting track that is sure to keep us dancing the night away. This was unfortunate for Tom Hiddleston though, best known for his role as Loki in the Marvel Universe, briefly dating the singer in 2016, even briefly being dubbed Hiddleston 
Swift by fans. That's so cute. The couple was together for a grand total of three months, but during that time, were very public about their activities, almost trying to like sell us on the idea that they were just so happy together. The timing of this was just a little too suspicious, as Hiddleston had just begun production on Thor Ragnarok, and Swift was working on her then unreleased album, Reputation. The two seemed to be using the relationship strong media attention to their advantage, with past album sales growing up to the point of Reputation's release for Swift's, and buzz surrounding Ragnarok was in full swing till its premiere the following year, eventually becoming one of the highest grossing Marvel movies of all time. Yeah, sus guys. Number 9. Jennifer Lopez and Drake It all started back in 2013, when Jennifer Lopez made a jaw dropping entrance at the Grammy Awards. She walked out in a stunning off the shoulder black gown dress, and Drake's jaw dropped. The moment became a viral gif, which certainly caught the attention of JLo, because over the next couple of years, Drake was spotted, popping up at a number of Lopez's All I Have concerts in Las Vegas, Nevada. In one instance, Drake posted a photo of himself holding JLo's diamond encrusted hat while she slayed it on stage. Soon after, rumors began flying that the two had secretly been together for quite some time, with some photos suggesting that they were spending a lot of their quality time together. With no warning, Drake posted a photo of himself and Jen cozying up together, seeming confirming the relationship, but many people were suspicious of the true nature of their relationship, including pop singer Rihanna, who unfollowed Lopez on social media following their announcement. The relationship eventually fizzled out at an unspecified amount of time later, and the two never spoke about it again. But these two getting together created such a buzz on social media that their followers grew by thousands, which was probably the real reason these two went public in the first place. Number 8. Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson. His skin was pale and his cold, and that's how Kristen seems to like him. The late 2000s were dominated by the Twilight series. Film centered around Bella, a new girl who just moved from sunny Arizona to rainy Washington State, and Edward, a handsome but mysterious teen who, spoiler alert, he's a freaking vampire! Stewart and Pattinson played the characters over the course of five films, and the chemistry was very apparent, so much so that they decided to move that chemistry off the screen. Over the course of the five films, the pair would get together and split over and over, claiming the time and time again that they simply just needed a break from each other. Now we didn't buy this for a second, as their reunions always seemed to take place on set, filming the next movie, or just coinciding with the time of the red carpet events. It was just very clear that it was a Hollywood PR person forcing these two to continue pursuing something that may have once existed, but had most certainly been drained of its blood. Number 7. Steve-O and Nicole Richie Steve-O, the stuntman, is known for doing some wild things. He's been blown up, shot out of speeding shopping carts, and he's even kicked a shark one time because it was about to bite his foot off. But the wildest thing he's ever done of all? He settled down. In 2006, himself and reality TV star Nicole Richie had been spotted spending a lot of their free time together at restaurants and parties and concerts. At the time, Richie's show The Simple Life, which was a reality show starring herself and Paris Hilton, was in its last season, and Steve-O was riding the wave of success following the recent release of a sequel to a movie whose title could get us demonetized. So it makes sense that Nicole would plot a publicity stunt to draw attention to herself and to attempt to keep a hold of her show. This did not work as the show remained cancelled and the pair called it quits only a few months after they had gotten together. Steve-O has since moved on as is now engaged to his girlfriend Lux Wright. <laughs> yeah dude! Number 6. Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn The Breakup is a 2005 romantic dramedy starring Aniston and Vaughn as a couple who are stuck living together following a nasty split that leaves them fighting for custody of their apartment. This sounds like a cute movie. You know what's even cuter? The pair became a couple in real life. They were regularly seen off set having dinner and snuggling up together, sparking news of another screen couple turned true lovers. Well, in 2006, that news shifted to accuracy of film title astonishes all, as the couple mutually called it quits, agreeing that the relationship had run its course. Convenient timing, considering for months before their film premiere, the couple was creating buzz online, getting people excited to see the real life couple acting together on the big screen. But despite the attempt, the film received poor reviews and the PR play had seemingly proved useless. Now while this may have been a stunt, the two recount sharing a wonderful time together, with Aniston even saying that Vaughn was the defibrillator she needed 
after a rough divorce from Brad Pitt. I don't know why that's a good thing. That sounds very painful. <laughs> We're halfway through the list number five, and we have Black China and Rob Kardashian. If this one was fake, I don't see the point of it because no good media press came from this. For many years, Rob has always lived in the shadows of his sister, seeing as he is the only boy out of all the siblings. He stayed out of the drama, skipped big red carpet events, and just overall did his own thing. But then he met Black China, and their relationship immediately became public with one of the most frequent tabloid topics every week. All very bad things, by the way. The whole relationship was very volatile, and then a baby was added to the mix, which caused even more drama and issues. Now, their baby is what makes me think that there's no way they would fake it and carry it out that far, like by bringing a child into the world. It just seems strange because they were always at each other's throats, but then they did their own reality show, so it came across like they were just staying together at that point for the TV show. People flooded social media with comments saying that they were faking the relationship for the TV show as a way to try and extend their fame as much as they could. Taking over the number four spot is Kendall Jenner and Harry Styles. Despite the fact that she is now one of the biggest models in the world, there was a time when she was just starting out as a serious model. During that time, rumors circulated that she was dating the One Direction singer, Harry Styles. People began pondering upon the fact that the relationship conveniently happened just as she started to move from her reality TV show to the runway. They were both huge young stars at the time making something out of their careers, so it was a quick and easy way for them to make headlines, if it was fake. Some people even went as far as saying Kris Jenner, Kendall's mom, who's also her manager, forced the relationship as a PR stunt. But Kris went on the record saying that she was actually really upset that they didn't work out, but that could be because it wasn't giving her a paycheck no more. Rolling into our third spot is Ryan Seacrest and Julianne Huff. This one was really weird, I gotta admit. Back in 2010, Ryan was receiving a lot of questions about his sexuality, and even Julianne admitted that at first she thought he might be gay. So when reports started saying that they were dating, people were really confused by it. She was 22 years old at the time and told TMZ, He totally wasn't my type, I thought he was gay. After a few years, he was persistent, so I went out with him on a date and I realized how much I liked him. Some people said that they were an adorable couple, while others dragged the relationship, claiming that it was fake and was all a publicity stunt to make her more of a household name, and to also prove Ryan really was a ladies man. Honestly, that is some serious claims and like huge assumptions. So um, it's gonna depend what uh, you believe on this situation. I feel like you should not assume someone's sexuality though. In the number two spot is Taylor Swift and Tom Hiddleston. Taylor was actually on my part one list with a different guy, so it just goes to show that people often doubt her love life and whether or not her relationships are real. Why she gets ridiculed so much for her love life, I don't know, but people thought her and Tom were faking it. But some would say this is a tough call, because when Tom did an interview with GQ after the two of them split up, he really did seem heartbroken and genuine about the whole thing. But there was no doubt their new public relationship brought more attention to his projects. People also called him out for the time that he wore the I Love TS t-shirt, where he tried to give an explanation, but no one was really buying it. It seemed like he was doing that for media attention. I mean, why else would you wear that shirt? It's weird. Finally, we've made it to number one, and we have Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens. You guys on the internet will not ruin this one for me, because I am choosing to ignore you people. In my head and heart, these two are still gonna get married someday, so. I can understand, though, why people would consider it convenient for their high school musical series, but their love did look real from the outside, to some people anyways. The two of them met on the set of their first movie from the franchise and started dating after their characters fell in love with each other in the movie. Obviously, this was a fairy tale ending for fans to see them dating as their characters and in real life. It didn't help their case though that they split just after the series stopped airing. That is when people began making comments that their PR teams probably suggested and kind of had a hand in their whole relationship thing from the start. Starting off at number 10, we have Travis Scott and Rihanna. Many people don't know about this couple, because the time they spent together was kept very secret. Obviously before Travis started dating Kylie Jenner. Although the pair were seen out a few times, neither party confirmed that they were actually seeing each other. The only confirmation we got that they actually dated was from inside sources. The relationship was first exposed on an episode of the Throwing Fits podcast. 
Then journalist Jonah Wiener shared more about the relationship with Complex. Wiener said, quote, I broke the news about him and Brianna, which they told me not to do. It's not because he's like, don't tell anyone I'm smashing Brianna, it's because Brianna's like, don't tell anyone I'm smashing Travis Scott, please. Adding it's obviously embarrassing as hell. And if this is true that she was embarrassed of him, I respect Rihanna even more than I did before. In at number 9, Tom Ackerley and Margot Robbie. Since Margot Robbie is known for playing the love interest in most of her movies, it's a shock to learn that she's been married this whole time, but intentionally kept it a secret. Some speculate that her management has forced her to appear single so her married status would not affect her work. Robbie and Ackerley were roommates before they dated and eventually married in a surprise ceremony in 2016. And it's near impossible to find a photo of them together on her Instagram or on the red carpet. Usually, Robbie attends red carpets alone. In April of 2019, Robbie posted a rare photo of the couple on vacay in Finland. And in at number 8, Daniel Craig and Rachel Wiez. This high powered couple is another that is incredibly secretive. According to Metro, the couple first met in college and were friends for years, but it wasn't until they starred in the 2011 movie Dream House together that they actually started dating. Not only has the relationship been a secret, but so has the marriage. Apparently, the two got married in 2011 in a secret ceremony that was attended by just four people. They have been quietly together ever since and even started a family together. They now share a child together that was born in 2018. The pair are so secret that they don't even attend a lot of public events together, but it works for them. We has told the New York Times, quote, Daniel and I are really similar. We're just really crap at talking about our private lives. It seems that the pair also believe it's not a good idea to speak about their relationship to the public. In at number 7, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Beyonce and Jay-Z's relationship is happily out in the public now, although the details on what goes on behind closed doors is still very secretive. Although you might not know that the couple kept their relationship hidden during the first few years that they were together. According to People Magazine, they initially started dating around 2000, but the media didn't learn about their romance until 2004 when they went to the MTV VMAs together. Even when they started appearing out in public together, their relationship was still private. The couple later got married during a secret ceremony in 2008 that nobody knew about for months. The only time we really see the couple together is during rare interviews or when either of them releases a documentary. In at number 6, Matthew Perry and Lizzie Kaplan. This couple kept their relationship so well hidden that nobody knew that they were even together until long after they split. That's even more impressive because they dated for a whopping 6 years. It was reported that after six years of being together, they split in 2012. They kept their breakup secret for over a year before it was even announced. Sources said after the split that the two did not agree on their long-term goals. Kaplan wanted to get married, but Perry was not interested. The source added, quote, The last year that they were together it was very up and down, a lot of back and forth. It was hard for them to let go, but ultimately Lizzie decided she wanted more. The source didn't know if Perry was against marriage altogether or if he just not want to get married to Lizzie. Halfway through this countdown is Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys. You know something didn't come across as genuine when you have to do an interview on whether your marriage was fake or not. The relationship has been an ongoing debate for years with fans saying the whole thing was just one big publicity stunt. Kanye West is not Kim's first husband. She was actually married to Chris at one point and the whole thing was captured on the reality show Keeping Up With The Kardashians. The sixth season of their show made more gross than other seasons because of their relationship drama and people couldn't help but think it was all planned. They they were only married for 72 days and they both received a ton of money for their televised wedding, so it would make sense. But Chris has always denied that the relationship was fake. We're moving on to number four and we have Tana Mojo and Jake Paul. Unlike our last number, these two have openly admitted to the relationship being fake. When they first started dating, fans were super excited, but then they got engaged just after a month or two of them dating, so people started to question what their intentions were. Their Engagement happened on a stage in Vegas and seemed a little bit too staged, but it was nothing compared to their wedding in Vegas, which they made a fortune off of. They planned this entire wedding, filmed the whole process, and charged fans $50 to watch it online. Turns out in the end, they were never even dating. Apparently, they didn't sleep together, and they were all just friends, and they just did it for glow. It really did seem real in moments, though, but they were never legally married, so if you're wondering if they got a divorce, they, uh, they didn't have to. Um, and they quickly started dating other people after that. All right, guys, we're at number three, and we have Renee Zellweger and Bradley Cooper. The two of them met in 2006 while filming their movie Case 39, but rumors about the relationship didn't happen until three years later, just before the film was.
was going to premiere. Coincidence? Some people will say so. People were questioning their intentions because they tried to keep the relationship out of the public eye as much as possible. But they started dating in 2009 and dated for two years. So like, I personally feel like you can't fake it for that long. Like that's way too much time to fake a relationship. But this year in 2020, the two of them reunited at the Oscar Awards and they looked like they were getting a little friendly. Rumors started spreading the day after, claiming that the two of them had a sleepover after the event, but it was never confirmed. Their movie Case 39 had completely bombed at the box office, so even if it was a PR stunt, it did not work or make a difference on the film's success. So I personally don't think this one was fake. Taking over the number two spot is Big Ed and Rose. One of the hardest things to decipher about the show 90 Day Fiance is if the relationship is real or if they are just trying to use their partner for citizenship, money, or even fame. It's always a really awkward debate, and on the latest season, people started calling out Ed and Rose for not being truthful. The two of them went viral after some of their funny clips turned into memes and gifts that people use on a daily basis. Some people accused Rose as being fake since her sister messaged and asked Ed for money since their family struggles financially, and others accuse Ed for being fake because he just wanted a young beautiful girl to marry on TV. They aren't together and didn't make it through the show, but they are both huge on social media. Like People love following them, even like as individuals. Earning the number one spot on our list is Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. It could be considered the most debated relationship out there because of the media attention that it got, and maybe that was the point. Every time Taylor starts dating someone, she gets a ton of media attention and her breakups receive even more, which is part of the reason why people claim that she faked a relationship with Harry Styles, all for a publicity stunt. People thought they fabricated their breakup more than anything because Taylor allegedly just kept doing things to get media attention. Like during her performance of We Are Never Getting Back Together at the Grammy Awards, she apparently faked a British accent during the break in the song to kind of mock him, and she also thanked him when she won the award for her song. Since the song was about their breakup, she apparently owes him this one. It just seemed like maybe they went out of their way for media, if that makes sense. So uh, a lot of people think they faked it. In at number 10, Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly are the hot new couple on the block in Hollywood. But a lot of people are not buying the relationship, and with how public that they've been, experts are pretty sure that it's a PR stunt. Here are just a few examples of why people think that it's fake. Firstly, in Megan's interview on on the Give Them La La with Randall podcast, Megan Fox revealed that she knew Machine Gun Kelly was her quote soulmate even before they met. And apparently after she heard MGK was cast as the other lead in the film, she already felt the connection deep in her soul. I don't know, it's a little suspicious. Also, MGK claims that he literally did nothing on set but pine and obsess over Megan Fox. They've also been all over social media claiming that they're twin flames. Megan also made waves by starring in MGK's music video for Bloody Valentine. And personally, I I believe that Megan Fox needed a hot new relationship to get her name back in the spotlight, as well as to promote their new movie together. So it just seems pretty convenient to me. And at number nine, Rob Kardashian and Black China. I fully believe that this relationship was entirely orchestrated by China for two reasons. I think the first reason was to get famous off of the Kardashian name, but the second was to get some low-key revenge on the Kardashian family because Kylie stole her baby daddy, Tyga. It seemed all too convenient when Rob and China got together and they moved at pretty much lightning speed, getting engaged and then learning they were pregnant. The couple also got their own show, Rob and China, out of that relationship, which was lucrative for both of them. And even though it was a complete mess, it got major publicity for the both of them and gave tons of storylines for keeping up with the Kardashians as well. Of course, the two have a child together, so I'm sure some part of the relationship was real, but I also believe a lot of it was fake. In at number eight, Selena Gomez and The Weeknd. Selena Gomez and The Weeknd had a brief public relationship right after both of them broke up with their respective partners. But this relationship just seemed incredibly convenient. And honestly, these two people did not seem compatible whatsoever to me, which led to a lot of people thinking this relationship was actually fake. Here are a few reasons why. Firstly, the two got very public very fast and were paparazzi at music festivals like Coachella and out on the streets of LA. But they never posted anything to their own social media profile. 
profiles, which could be proof that they never spent any time together alone, only in front of the cameras. Also, there were tons of blind gossip forums that claimed that many in the industry knew that it was just a publicity stunt. The last and most important piece of evidence for me was that both of them were seen out with their exes, Justin Bieber and Bella Hadid, almost right after Selena and Abel's breakup. And with all that combined, I'm pretty convinced that it was just a publicity stunt. In at number seven, Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. These two coincidentally started dating the same time that they were starring as love interests in the Spider-Man franchise. And that's pretty much the biggest sign of a fake relationship that there is. However, I do have to say that these two are pretty much the only couple that I actually thought were good together and like could be a thing in the real world. One of the biggest reasons people think that this was a fake relationship is because they were together during the promotions for Spider-Man, but split up once the movie didn't need any more promotion. Then after taking a break, they ended up getting back together when they were both up for the Oscars and seemingly when they needed some much needed publicity. And although none of this is solid proof, it's just very like interesting timing. And at number six, Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rose Depp. This is another couple that started because they were in love interests on the movie that they were part in called The King. Both Timothy and Lily are rising stars and it made sense for both of them to get in a relationship together to get even more publicity. Especially since they're a very good looking couple, I have to admit. The situation here is that they were spotted up together in New York City and paparazzi pictures of course looking pretty cozy together. But everyone wasn't convinced that they were actually together until they showed up to the Venice Film Festival hand in hand. But there is a chance that their management didn't think that they were selling their love story good enough. So days after the festival, these photos of them kissing on a boat were released and they show very clear romantic interest along with a whole lot more that we won't get into. But there has been a lot of talk that this photo is staged because it's almost impossible for paparazzi to get that close of a shot unless the celebrities let them. Halfway number five, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Gosling. Before Ryan Gosling was with Eva Mendes, he and Sandra Bullock dated for over a year if you can believe it. And the relationship was pretty secretive for two A-list stars. In 2002, the pair dated for a little over a year after filming by numbers together. They never confirmed their relationship while it was happening, but in 2011, Gosling told The Times that Bullock was one of his quote, greatest girlfriends ever. Bullock also sung his praises and said he helped her become more laid back person, she said in one interview. And at number four, Jamie Foxx and Katie Holmes. After Katie Holmes' strange relationship with Tom Cruise ended, she got into a relationship with Jamie Foxx that wasn't made public until several years later. It's been reported that the couple first got together since at least 2013, but didn't go public until 2017 after being together for four years. Many fans felt the secrecy was not just planned by the couple, it was actually forced by Tom Cruise. After Tom and Katie's divorce, sources revealed that one stipulation of their divorce settlement was that Katie was not allowed to publicly date anyone for at least five years after. That rumor has never been proven, but since the announcement, Jamie and Katie had been happily showing off their PDA, maybe that's because they were silenced for so long. The pair split in 2019, a source said, quote, Jamie was disappointed, though we understood she needed more of a commitment. And at number three, Jennifer Grey and Matthew Broderick. These two starred as brother and sister in the hit movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. They portrayed their hatred for each other so well, I was shocked to hear that the pair actually dated back in the day. The pair started dating after making the hit movie, but kept their relationship low key because they thought people might think it was strange. However, their relationship came to public attention after the couple was involved in a fatal car crash while vacationing together in Ireland in 1987. Sadly, both passengers in the other car passed away as a result of the crash. Roderick was found to be at fault for the accident and Grace suffered minor physical injuries. She later said she also struggled for years to recover emotionally from the incident. The trauma from that accident led to their split. And at number two, Scarlett Johansson and Sean Penn. After Scarlett had a very public divorce from Ryan Reynolds, she decided to leave her relationships out of the spotlight for good. That's why her romance with Sean Penn was kept under wraps. Given how famous she is, it's hard to believe that she managed to keep an entire relationship with another A-list actor a secret. But she did just that when she dated Sean Penn in 2011. According to Johansson, they quote, spend time together for about six months. I guess that's her way of saying it was a pretty casual affair. She added in a 2012 interview with Vogue, quote, I never put a title on it really, but we were seeing each other. And even though it didn't last, the pair still remained friends. And finally, number one, Cole Sprouse and Lily Reinhardt. These two played love interests in the hit show Riverdale. And like we see often with celebrity relationships, this pair's acting led into real life and we assume that they started dating. Although they never made it official, it was obvious to anyone who was paying attention. It's rumored that they started dating sometime in 2017. The pair got in tons of drama too, and apparently were very on and off. One time, Cole was even accused of cheating on Lily with model Kaya Gerber. 
Then in 2020, Cole officially announced their split on Instagram, writing in a long caption, quote, Lily and I initially separated in January of this year, deciding to more permanently split in March. And what an incredible experience I had. I'll always feel lucky and cherished that I had the chance to fall in love. I wish her nothing but the utmost love and happiness moving forward. All I'll say about it is anything else you hear doesn't matter. Kicking off our countdown at number 10 is Drake and Jennifer Lopez. When rumors started circulating back in 2016 that the two of them were hooking up, people were losing their minds. And by people, I mean me, because I really did think that they would make a hot couple. At first, it just seemed that they were friends with benefits, like that type of situation, but then they allegedly started dating. They posted cuddly selfies together, and JLo even revealed she was making music with him. Once it turned more serious, people started to get skeptical about it and people were calling it fake. They didn't last very long and they split right before JLo met her new man, Alex Rodriguez. A source close to Drake told tabloids that they are cool with each other and that Drake still thinks she is a goddess, but during one of JLo's concerts, she referred to Drake as a booty call. So maybe they just weren't on the same page or maybe it was all for a fun publicity stunt. Who knows? Either way, I was shipping it hard at the time. Up next, number nine is Nicole Richie and Steve-O. Let's do a little time travel back to 2006 when Nicole was starring on the reality show The Simple Life with her bestie Paris Hilton. Steve-O was spending his time doing a bunch of crazy weird stunts on Jackass. They both seemed a little bit wild during that time, so it didn't seem like a weird pairing when reports said that they were in a relationship. But then Steve-O ruined the whole thing and spilled the beans, admitting that it was all for publicity. He said, the truth is she wanted some publicity for something other than being skinny. It was a publicity stunt. She would come pick me up. I don't drive. I think she called the paparazzi too. Now, I'm sure they had an agreement at the time to keep like the whole fake part a secret, but um, steve went and done and ruined that. Cruising to number eight is Selena Gomez and Zed. Maybe you forgot they even dated, and that might be because it only lasted a few short months, which people said was all a publicity stunt anyways. Back in 2015, the two of them were dating, but rumors started going around that it was not real. They both fueled the fire by talking about the relationship in public and also hinting things on social media. They shared that they worked on a song together called What I Want You To Know, which was a huge hit. But just a few months into their relationship, it it ended and people said it was all too convenient with the timing of their new single and they thought that they did it to promote the song and also their label. Moving on to number 7 is Shailene Woodley and Theo James. Fans were thrilled to hear that they had started a relationship after seeing them together in the Divergent series. Because they were co-stars, this caught the media's attention immediately and their teen fans went insane over it. But the tricky thing is, they never confirmed their relationship. They kind of just acted like they were in one. Whether it was flirting on the red carpet or making comments during interviews, you could tell that the idea was being played up for the media if it was in fact not real. Some might argue and say that they were in a real relationship and just trying to keep it low key, but majority of fans said it was a fun co-star publicity stunt to bring more attention to the series. Moving on to number six, we have Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. They seemed like an adorable couple, so if they were actually faking it, I feel completely betrayed because I fell for this one. Their relationship seemed very genuine based off their adorable paparazzi photos at the time, but people said the timing of the relationship was a little fishy. They started dating when they were starring in the Spider-Man movies together, which definitely helped the movie franchise because people love when co-stars date in real life. But then they split for a while and took a so-called break and got back together right when they both had serious films up for Oscar nominations. So people started saying that everything seemed very convenient with the media timing, but the truth is it could have just been a coincidence and their love was very real. What do you guys think? On number five, Millie Vanilli. In the 90s, there was a huge music scandal that ended careers and ended in tragedy. The lip sync scandal that surrounded Millie Vanilli was one of music's biggest scandals, and it revealed that they were never really a group and everything was fake. This stage act was put together by German record producer Frank Farian as he attempted to create the next biggest music stars like one big publicity stunt. It worked in theory, but they fell from grace as quickly as they rose. He had a vision to be able to release amazing music, but he needed the perfect people 
people to sell it, and that's where Morven and Politis came into play. These two dancers were hired to be the bright shining faces of Millie Vanilli, and even though it was a musical act, they never had to sing. In fact, they lip synced their entire career. Their act was a hit, and it worked for a while, even earning themselves a Grammy for their song Girl You Know It's True, but like all good things, they can never last. Millie Vanilli conquered the Billboard charts, they were asked to tour and perform live, but things started to get difficult for them since this act never really sang, and playing pretend on stage just wasn't cutting it. Eventually, they were caught in the act, so to speak, as their track suddenly stopped working during a live performance, revealing that they were faking it all along. At number 4, Joe Exotic After the success of the Tiger King documentary on Netflix, Joe Exotic became something of a celebrity. He became more of a meme, but news sources were still reporting on his life developments as though he was just any other public figure. In fact, they're still reporting on him, and I really don't know why. Joe's ex-husband, John Finley, recently came forward to talk about his relationship with the big cat owner and exposed his marriage to him, revealing that it was all fake. John said that his whole marriage was just for Joe's popularity, remarking that the wedding that they showed in the documentary was all, quote, basically a publicity stunt so Joe could get his own reality TV series. John has also said that he's since moved on with a woman and is trying to forget his past with Joe, which is a bit difficult for him since he's still carrying around tattoos of Joe's name, which he says will be covered up in the future. At number three, Paula Dean. There was once a time where everyone was in love with Paula Dean. She was once the wholesome southern mom who loved to cook, but after 2013, her public image was tarnished after a lawsuit revealed her racist actions to the world. Back then, Paula was facing legal action from one of her former employees who alleged that Paula was racist towards her and that she had been repeatedly harassed while working at one of her restaurants. After being deposed, the truth came out after Paula was asked if she had ever used the N-word and she admitted to it. After this came out, things got worse for Paula and backlash ensued. As anyone would do, Paula tried to control the situation and de-escalate it and even sat down for an interview on the Today Show, but instead of owning up to her actions and trying to clear her name as most people would try and do in that situation, Paula instead downplayed the situation, deflected the blame, and even commented on how surprised she was that people were mad about what she did. It was thought that this interview was all done for publicity, not for making a public apology, and after this, her career has never been the same. At number 2, Britney Spears and Madonna Can you believe that it's been around 18 years since Britney Spears and Madonna blew people's minds when they kissed live on stage at the MTV VMAs? After Britney, Madonna, and Christina Aguilera opened the show with a performance, they did something that was considered pretty bold for the time, and Britney and Madonna shared a kiss. The moment was broadcast, but cameras were cut for a brief moment, so those watching at home didn't see the whole thing, but the other people in the audience sure did. The camera did a brief pan around the room when the kiss happened, and people were stunned, taken aback, and losing their minds over what was going on on stage. This kiss made headlines, and as expected, people talked about it, and caused it to be a much bigger deal than it really should have been. Either way, looking back on it now so many years later, I have to say, that was pretty epic. And finally at number one, Kanye West. I think we all know that Kanye West is an outspoken dude. No matter the circumstance or setting, Kanye will do whatever he wants when he feels like it and won't apologize for any of it. One example of this has to come from his commentary on the situation in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana back in 2005. After the devastating storm passed through the area, celebrities were gathered to do a televised fundraiser to help those affected. Teleprompters were set up for the stars to read statements and encourage people to donate, but Kanye decided to Kanye it up a bit and added his own thoughts to the situation. I've even been shopping before even giving a donation, so now I'm calling my business manager right now to see what's, what is the biggest amount I can give. Kanye went on a tangent about how he feels for the people affected, especially the black families struggling to stay safe and fed, saying that he wanted to donate as much as he could to the cause. He went on for a while, and after he passed it back to Mike Myers, who he was presenting with, Kanye took the attention back to then say the infamous line, George Bush doesn't care about black people. They immediately cut the broadcast from them and went over to someone else, and Kanye's remarks were made famous, but probably not in the best way. In the number 10 spot is Katy Perry and Riff Raff. People called their relationship the most awkward and cruel joke prom date ever. It was just a few months after Katie broke up with John Mayer that dating rumors about her and Riff Raff started to emerge. They shocked everyone when they showed up on the red carpet together wearing matching outfits and claiming to be a couple. Matching jean outfits, by the way. I don't think many people got too invested in their relationship because people didn't believe that it was real or they just didn't want to believe that it was real. Either way, just a few weeks after these epic red carpet pictures, Riff was spotted in a brothel and claiming to be a single man. 
So maybe it's just like a way for Katie to get some like innocent jealousy revenge on John, you know what I mean? But you know, I feel like she was just trying to make her ex-man jealous. Up next, number nine, we have Michelle Rodriguez and Zac Efron. Back in 2014, people were both shocked and confused when vacation pictures surfaced of them holding hands, kissing, and getting all cozy and stuff. People were quick out to point out the red flag, saying that the whole thing just seemed really fake. She was a decade older than Zac, he was 20 26 and she was 36, and she was dating model Cara Delevingne just a few months prior to these photos. After the vacation photos, the next headlines were one month later when they split up. They were only together for over a month. Apparently, they broke up after an argument in Ibiza when Michelle said that Zach was looking for something serious and she wasn't. Swiping the number eight spot is Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn. People might think that their relationship was fake because they never wanted Jen and Brad Pitt to break up. Up, let's be honest. So no matter who she dated, people might just say like that it was fake because they were just talking smack. Jennifer and Vince were working together on the 2006 comedy movie The Breakup when they allegedly started dating. Paparazzi photos were leaked online, showing them being cuddly, but sources say that they were hardly ever together. It almost seemed a little bit just too sketchy that they broke up after the movie came out. Once it was on DVD and the promotion stopped, you know, like they just broke up, so it seemed like weird timing. Did they date for the movie to promote it? Did they break up because the breakup was over? You know what I mean? Just the timing of that was a little sketchy. Sliding into number seven is Kaylee Cuoco and Henry Cavill. I know I'm not the only one who thought this couple was like super random. Around the time that his movie Man of Steel came out in 2013, he had started to date Kaylee, who was well into her career from The Big Bang Theory. But people started questioning if it was all for publicity. During an interview, Kaylee mentioned that they were getting photographed a lot. She said, I had no one following me until I met Superman. There had been not one paparazzi photo of me until like seven months ago. Their highly publicized relationship only lasted weeks and people pointed out that they both had the same publications firm. Kaylee ended up marrying Ryan Sweeting just three months after her and Henry split. And at number six is Nicki Minaj and DJ Khaled. You might be sitting there saying you didn't even know they dated, let alone got engaged, but that is because the whole proposal was fake. In the end, it turned out to be a publicity stunt that even Nicki was a little surprised about. In 2013, DJ Khaled proposed to Nicki on MTV and it seemed genuine to everyone watching. Nicki even wore the ring for a while and she acted totally shocked by the proposal too. But later she came clean and said that she was shocked by the proposal, but at the same time, she never thought that it was real. She knew what Khaled was doing and it was all a PR stunt to help promote their upcoming song that they were collaborating on. On called I want to be with you. How fitting, you get what I say? I want to be with you. So he proposes and they have this thing. Halfway number five, Shailene Woodley and Aaron Rodgers. This couple silently got together in 2020 and fans were shocked to learn about the unlikely couple. The pair was rumored together during the pandemic but they kept it out of the public eye until February 2021 when Rodgers thanked his fiance during a speech. While on stage with the NFL Honors Award show, he said, quote, 2020 was definitely a crazy year full of lots of change, growth, some amazing memorable moments. 180 straight days of having my nose hair scraped, playing for very little fans or no stands the entire season. I got engaged and I played some of the best football in my career. Weeks later when Woodley went on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, she confirmed their engagement and showed off her engagement ring. Sources have revealed that the pair are not traditional and will be keeping it very under wraps. One source added, quote, they have a very different non-traditional relationship. Shailene and Aaron are still together, it's not odd, and they don't post about each other on their birthdays in that sense, and are very private about things. And then number four, Nicole Kidman and Lenny Kravitz. Nicole Kidman and Lenny Kravitz are most likely a couple the public would never think of. But these two did date, and even more shocking, they were so serious about the relationship they were even engaged at one point. They got together in the early 2000s and were photographed out and about, but never confirmed any details about their relationship. Until 2017 when Kidman revealed during an interview that they were engaged. When Kidman was speaking about her castmates on Big Little Lies, she said, quote, Well, I knew Zoe because I was engaged to her father. She said of working with Zoe Kravitz. Quote, it's all in the family. I love Lenny, he's a great guy. And at number three, Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah. Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah dating is not a shock at all to me. 
They star in a lot of comedies together and their personalities seem really similar. But what is shocking is that they kept their relationship totally secret while they worked together. After filming Scott Pilgrim vs. The World together, Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah started seeing each other officially. But they didn't tell the world until after they had broken up. In a 2016 episode of RuPaul's podcast, What's the Tea, Plaza revealed that they dated for more than a year, saying, quote, we love each other and we're just really good friends. He's just a weird little freak and we speak the same language. In at number two, Cory Booker and Rosario Dawson. New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker and actress Rosario Dawson started dating while Booker was campaigning for the presidency in 2019. The rumors that they were dating first started when they were seen out at a performance of Broadway's Dear Evan Hansen together. Then a few months later in March, Dawson confirmed the relationship to TMZ. She said, quote, I'm just grateful to be with someone that I respect and love and admire so much. The pair are still very low key and do not share details about their relationship, but Dawson has been spotted at a rally supporting Booker and has made a few appearances on her social media profiles, along with attending some of her movie premieres. And finally, number one, Zach Braff and Florence Pugh. This couple has kept their relationship pretty secret due to their controversial age gap. The couple who share a 21 year age gap met on the set of a 2019 short film that he directed called In the Time It Takes to Get There. They have never walked on a red carpet and are rarely seen on each other's Instagram. This is because the first time Braff appeared on Pew's Instagram, the post was flooded with hate comments regarding their age gap. The comments were later deactivated on the April 2020 post, and Pew later shared a video statement concerning the backlash. In the nearly four minute video, she shared that she was forced to turn off the comments on her post, showing Braff because 70% of the comments were hurling hate. She shared that she is a 24 year old grown woman and she can make her own decisions about who she chooses to be with. She added that it is nobody's place to talk badly about a relationship that does not affect them. And if people cannot hold their tongues, they should just unfollow her. The pair are still together and are very serious. They also share an adopted dog. In at number 10, Madonna and Tupac. This relationship was super low key, but it did happen. And two of the biggest musical legends dated back in their heyday. Madonna and Tupac dated for over a year until the late rapper ended things with a letter written from prison in 1995 that later went public when it went up for auction. In that letter, Tupac admitted he needed to break up with her because he felt by being with a white woman, he was letting down the black community. The letter ended up being sold for more than $170,000. The letter is dated January 15th of 1995 and is addressed to his ex, Madonna or M as he would call her. In the letter, he wrote, quote, for you to be seen with a black man wouldn't in any way jeopardize your career. But for me, at least in my previous perception, I felt due to my image, I would be letting down half of the people who made me what I thought I was. In number nine, Kaylee Kiyoko and Johnny Galecki. These co-stars characters were in a relationship during the hit show, The Big Bang Theory. But a little known fact is that the actors dated in real life at the same time, but they kept it hidden for the sake of the show. Kyoko revealed that they were together for two years from 2007 to 2009 in an interview with CBS Watch in 2010. She said, quote, It was a wonderful relationship, but we never spoke a word about it and never went anywhere together. We were so protective of ourselves and the show and didn't want anything to ruin that. However, Kuoko revealed that the secret nature of their relationship is also the reason that it ended, because it took a toll on their bond. She added, quote, everyone was always asking and we deny, 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 as she revealed. And I'm like, why am I denying this person that I love? In at eight, Renee Zellweger and Bradley Cooper. Both of these celebrities have been in high profile relationships in the past, but for some reason, the relationship between them was kept a secret until their split. Back in 2009, they dated after filming Case 39 together. They never publicly confirmed their relationship, but we were all pretty sure it was happening because they were seen being snapped by paparazzi out and about. It ended up being a good thing that they didn't go public though, because not long after the pair announced that they split. In 2011, it was reported that the relationship ended, even though they never even confirmed it in the first place. In at number seven, Helen Mirren and Liam Neeson. This is another celebrity couple that is not only a bit shocking, but it was kept a secret while the pair were together. The pair first met while filming the movie Excalibur in the early 80s, and you may be surprised to hear that they spent almost five years together. Thankfully, the pair ended things amicably and have said only kind things about each other since the split. Mirren spoke about the relationship on The Grand Norton Show in 2018. She said, quote, We didn't date. We lived together for four years. We were a serious item for a while. Lucky me. In at number six, Cher and Tom Cruise. Another very shocking relationship was between Cher and Tom Cruise. The pair never admitted it while they were together, but Cher revealed the secret to the Daily Mail in 2018. 
The relationship happened back in the 80s after the pair reconnected at an event. Cher said, quote, A bunch of people who were dyslexic were invited to the White House. Tom and I are both dyslexic. We didn't go out to way later, but there was definitely a connection there. Back in 1985, he was 23 and she was 38. The pair first met at Madonna and Sean Penn's wedding in Malibu, but it wasn't until their next meeting at the White House when they really connected. She later told Oprah Winfrey that they might have enjoyed a great big romance had their busy schedules not kept them apart. Number 5. Jay-Z and Beyonce Beyonce and Jay-Z are considered to be the music industry's most beloved couple, first getting together in 2001, a year after they first met at the MTV Spring Break Festival in Cancun. Their first collaboration as artists was released in 2002 and titled 03 Bonnie and Clyde, and not long after they released their second song Crazy in Love, which landed the couple a Grammy Award the following year. Their hit tracks coupled with the media attention surrounding their relationship seems to be one of the main ingredients of their family glue, as Jay-Z was actually the center of a cheating scandal in 2014, leading to the now infamous elevator fight. Despite the scandal and the fists, they stay together and have remained in the media mainstream ever since. Number 4. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis The couple first met as co-stars on That 70s Show, where they played on-again, off-again couple Jackie Burkhart and Michael Kelso. But they didn't become a real-life couple until 15 years later. Before they met, Ashton married fellow actor Dan Demi Moore and Mila had been dating Home Alone star Macaulay Culkin for nearly 8 years. Why was that not talked about more? What? In 2011, Ashton became the figure of public shame after Demi announced that they would be getting divorced following Ashton cheating on her with another woman. Now, While the mystery woman was never firmly identified, not long after this announcement, Mila Kunis and Ashton were seen attending the Golden Globes together and later confirmed that they had sparked a romantic relationship. In the time of the scandal, Ashton had slowed down in the acting world, but Mila was making movie after movie, starring in flicks like Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Ted, and Friends with Benefits, which all went on to be hits. The press coverage on top of the scandal seemed to give Mila a boost in her career, and despite backlash and personal issues within the relationship, the couple are still together for now. Number 3. Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. Despite what you may have assumed, these two did not meet on the set of the underappreciated live action Scooby Doo movie from 2000. No, Instead, these two met on the set of a little horror flick called I Know What You Did Last Summer in 1997. The Buffy star and the She's All That leading man were married in 2002 following the release of the Scooby Doo movie, previously mentioned, where they played Fred and Velma. The announcement of their engagement came only a few short months before the premiere, keeping these two in the media circuit for a majority of the early 2000s. Their careers were steady from 1995 till roughly the mid 2000s, deciding to step back from Hollywood to focus on being the best parents they could be. It's all good though, thanks to their star power and successful projects before their retirement, they were financially set for the foreseeable future. Theirs is a slow game though, as their kids are almost out of the house, which will give them the perfect opportunity to return to the spotlight. Maybe they'll get divorced just for the coverage or something, I guess we'll see. Number 2. Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas Catherine Zeta-Jones met future Ant-Man star Michael Douglas after he had his publicist arrange a date for them. Despite it not going well initially, they agreed to a second date and now have kids and a happy, healthy marriage. While their careers made steady through the 2000s and early 2010s, it wasn't until 2015 that Michael would return to the mainstream, following his casting announcement as Dr. Hank Pym in the MCU's take on the iconic pint-sized superhero Ant-Man. He began releasing promotional videos with co-star Paul Rudd, and the buzz surrounding the flick became stronger and stronger. Following the successful release of the film, Michael began doing more more press, and interviews in which he got more in depth on his relationship to Catherine. Catherine had remained fairly aloof in the acting world as she had been undergoing cancer treatments till roughly 2012. Following Michael's career resurgence, she decided it was the right time to capitalize and get herself back into the acting world. Her husband's success drove her to take roles in several projects, both good and bad. Morticia in the new Wednesday series. Great! The National Treasure TV series on Disney Plus. Burn it! Her career appears to be on the rise again. With the recent release of a third Ant Man movie, though, the couple are in for a fruitful future. And at number one, Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rosie. It was love at first sight for Ellen and Portia after meeting backstage at a concert in 2001. At the time, de Rosie was not publicly out of the closet, and Ellen had no idea how to go about the situation. It took three years for Portia and Ellen to finally admit their feelings towards each other. 
each other, and from there, things moved pretty quickly. The moment gay marriage was legalized in the states in 2008, the couple were married and are still going strong to this day. Now, while Ellen may have been famous at the time with both her sitcom and celebrity talk show, Portia hadn't really hit the mainstream yet until she was casted to play Lindsay Bluth in the much loved Netflix series Arrested Development. The show first premiered in 2003 and was not immediately recepted to audiences. Despite the stellar cast, which included Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and a young Michael Sarah, the writing just really didn't hit home with fans. However, following the public announcement of her relationship to Ellen, the show picked up in viewer numbers. Hmm. No doubt Ellen's fans curious to see where her new boo did for work. Arrested went on to have five seasons, however two of those seasons took place in 2013 and 2018, with the latter not even including Portia's character apart from a few green screen insertions. This combined with the cancellation of Ellen's show is a case of a celebrity couple driven straight into a ditch. At number 10, Aubrey Plaza. Even though many have tried, I feel like award shows aren't really the place to be pulling weird stunts because they never end well. I mean, look at the Kanye VMA moment. It was just straight up cringy. But even the embarrassment factor can't stop all celebrities from pulling stunts at these events. And actress Aubrey Plaza is one of those stars who tried to pull some kind of stunt and it totally backfired and it actually got her kicked out of the event. While attending the MTV Movie Awards back in 2013, Aubrey ran up on stage barefoot and tried to pry one of those golden popcorn trophies out of Will Ferrell's hands after he had just won the award for comedic genius. The comedian thought that the stunt was staged at first, but it turned out to have been a publicity stunt for one of Aubrey's films called The To-Do List, which she had spelled out across her chest. It was just a really cringy moment that I'm sure a lot of people have been trying to forget about, so sorry for bringing it up again. At number 9, Sasha Baron Cohen. Sasha Baron Cohen is quite the jokester and is known for his wild characters. From Bruno to Borat, he seems to always be in character and this was seemingly no exception at the Academy Awards in 2012. Sasha was at the event and walked the red carpet in character as Admiral General Shabazz al from his film The Dictator. Along with being accompanied by two bodyguards, he had a prop with him, a golden urn filled with the pretend ashes of North Korean Premier Kim Jong-il. While walking the red carpet, he stopped to be interviewed by Ryan Seacrest, and then this happened. Sasha dumped the ashes on Ryan, ruining his suit and causing quite a scene at the event. Weeks later, we found out that Sasha's original target was actually George Clooney, but since it was a big night for him, they skipped Clooney, and the unfortunate prank landed on Ryan instead. After that, Ryan purposely steered clear of Sasha, refusing to interview him, and the Academy has been vigilant of Sasha's stunts, though they haven't really been able to stop him since. Before we carry on talking about when publicity stunts went wrong, why not take a moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Sinead O'Connor. In October 1992, Sinead O'Connor caused some controversy during her guest spot on SNL. She was brought on the show to be the evening's musical guest, and already people were a little confused by her as she refused to sing one of her songs from her recent album at the time. Instead, she opted to sing an a cappella version of Bob Marley's song War. It was an intense performance, and she even changed some of the lyrics to specifically mention young people. As the song came to an end and she was wrapping up the performance, she pulled out a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up, saying, quote, fight the real enemy. Sinead's actions caused quite a stir. After her performance, NBC started receiving thousands of angry calls over the following days, and even some celebrities came forward to criticize Sinead's actions. She wanted to bring attention to the Catholic Church's treatment of young people because she's had personal experience with such things. This was certainly a publicity stunt gone wrong. At number 7, Kathy Griffin. Out of all the celebrity Twitter scandals out there, I think Kathy Griffin's scandal is probably the most well known. For those who might not know the story behind this and the comedian's cancellation, back in 2017, Kathy posted a photo of herself holding a fake model of Donald Trump's head. The post was pretty gory and bloody and graphic and it offended a lot of people. Trump's supporters and non-supporters alike were pretty taken aback by this post as many people said that she took things way too far. As a result of the post, Kathy was subsequently fired from CNN where she held a job co-hosting the New Year's Eve broadcast alongside Anderson Cooper, but after this bloodied head broke the internet, the broadcasters cut ties with the comedian and it did a lot of damage to her career. She was already someone who was known for being a little offensive at times and so this scandal really affected her career greatly. She regretted making this post because of how much backlash she got at the time and she issued an apology for it, but after the most recent presidential election, she posted that same photo again so maybe she didn't regret it as much as we thought she did, but honestly, who knows. At number 6, Janet Jackson. The Super Bowl halftime show is the one moment a year that millions of people tune in to watch the same thing. People turn off their reality TV programs and reruns of Jeopardy to grab a snack and watch the year's biggest performance. Well, during the 2004 Super Bowl halftime,
halftime show, viewers watched a serious wardrobe malfunction happen that was life changing to say the least. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together when a move went wrong and Janet's breasts ended up getting exposed. Following the incident, the media dubbed Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live incident in a $550,000 lawsuit citing indecent exposure for their cause. Janet Jackson was put through the ringer for her part in the scandal. As a result, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year and her songs were even blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums she released following the incident was met with negative reviews because of the scandal. If this were to have happened now, I doubt she would have been met with such severe backlash. It was later discovered that the whole incident happened because the two performers had added a costume reveal into their performance at the last minute and though it was rehearsed, the stunt failed resulting in Janet's exposure. It was all an accident that ended up destroying someone's career. 5. Theo James and Shailene Woodley These are some names you may not be super familiar with unless you were a teen in the early 2010s. James and Woodley are the stars of the Divergent series, young adult films about a dystopian future where society is split into five factions and one girl who does not fit into any one specific category. Woodley plays the leading lady, Tris Pryor, and Theo plays the leader of Dauntless named Four, aka Tobias. In the books, Tobias and Triss meet under strange circumstances and spark an intense romantic fuse. They then spend the next two movies running together from the faction elites. Playing a couple on set though seemed to have given the pair a brilliant idea as they began appearing closer and cuddlier as time went on. Many times in interviews for the second Divergent movie, the pair can be seen making cute comments and subtly flirting with each other, but sadly their fake love was not meant to last, as with the franchise coming to an end in 2016, so did their PR stunt. The couple maintained that the relationship actually never took place, but judging by the on-screen chemistry, that that actually that actually might be true. That might be true. Number 4. Kid Rock and Pamela Anderson, the singer and the lifeguard. Sounds like a cheesy sitcom, right? Well, that was the actual combo that took place when Kid Rock and Pamela Anderson began an on-again, off-again relationship in the early 2000s. At first only dating on and off again, the couple were then engaged after a reunion in 2003. They would call it off one more time before they tied the knot officially in 2006, only to file for a divorce soon after that. The back and forth nature of their relationship is not uncommon in the world of Hollywood with many high tier couples breaking up and reconciling over and over again. But what is uncommon is that the couple were airing out every single bit of dirty laundry for the public to see and soon speculation turned to truth as it was uncovered by a Hollywood insider that the couple's troubled history and rocky road were merely an attempt to keep themselves relevant in today's media circus. The plan didn't work as most of you watching this right now probably don't even care about these guys at all and some of you might not even know who either of these people are. So if that's the case, please go find some good old seasons of Baywatch and prepare to be amazed. Number 3. Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield For those of you who may have forgotten, between the original Spider-Man trilogy starring Tobey Maguire and the newest trilogy of Spider-Man movies starring Tom Holland, lived a little universe in which Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man and Sony was his ruler. The Amazing Spider-Man franchise only pumped out two movies between 2012 and 2024. Garfield played Peter Parker aka Spider-Man in the franchise and fan favorite Emma Stone was cast to play his leading lady Gwen Stacy. From day one on the the set, the two were inseparable, spending every second of free time they had together and developing what can only imagine must have been a strong and long lasting bond. However, these two getting together was just a little bit sus. People fall in love on set all the time, but this couldn't have been a more perfect setup if you tried. On screen love interests who take up a majority of the film's runtime with their undeniable chemistry shining through scene after scene, not to mention they're together in the movie for real like you fall in love with Gwen Stacy. Anyways, this almost feels like an extreme form of method acting because the couple were together for the entirety of the franchise, four years, only to call it quits a few months after the premiere of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. They've maintained a strong friendship ever since, but we really do miss you guys. Come back, Gwen. Number 2. Carmen Electra and Dennis Rodman This PR stunt lasted for all of two weeks in 1998. Carmen, who was then popular for her skills as a singer as well as a gifted dancer, met the famous basketball player Dennis Rodman at a nightclub in Los Angeles. They exchanged numbers and Rodman bombarded Electra with phone calls after phone calls until she finally agreed to hang out. Classic move, Dennis. Nagging. They started seeing each other regularly with Rodman once even clearing out the Chicago Bulls training center so that the two could have some fun together uninterrupted and anywhere their little hearts desired. They got married like most couples around the time did in Las Vegas baby! 
The two were married on November 14, 1998, only to file an annulment nine days later. Rodman claims to have not been in the right headspace when he agreed to the marriage, and the two haven't spoken to each other in years. Reporters and paparazzi were very skeptical about this move, as the couple's ups and downs had taken over the media circuit for months, causing Electra to get her name out there more, which was super convenient seeing as she had just started building up her repertoire in the movie industry, starring in cult classic movies like Good Burger, as well as as a recurring character on Baywatch. There's a good chance she would have made it on her own, but hey, it never hurts to publicly suffer first, right? Number one. Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys. Chris Humphreys is a former basketball player, and Kim Kardashian is, well, Kim Kardashian. The reality star and basketball player began dating in 2010 after his New Jersey teammate Jordan Farmer introduced them in New York. Less than a year later, the couple were engaged and officially married at a beautiful summer wedding. Of course, all of this was front page on social media and news outlets, causing a massive buzz for both the couple and the reality show. But after just 72 days of marriage, Kardashian Kardashian filed for a divorce, simply claiming they were not getting along at all. However, Chris has a different story. He simply wasn't following suit with the family's plans, claiming that Kim made him sign a prenuptial agreement before the wedding, granting her 100% of their earnings as a couple should they split. Chris filed his own annulment, claiming fraud and stating that the only reason she married him in the first place was for the TV ratings. And this was absolutely true, as proven with her immediate bounce back to Kanye West, as well as the couple's time on the show being some of the highest viewed episodes of season 6. While Kardashian knew the relationship wasn't going to work out, Chris didn't, and the entire thing was very real for him. So like, hey, Hollywood, chill out with the fake couples for a minute, you know?